Hi there, I'm Jack from the Global Compliance Institute. In this video we'll discuss the definition of sanctions and embargoes. So let's start. At first, what is the definition of sanctions? The Charter of the United Nations does not expressly define sanctions, but Article 41 is generally understood as providing a definition which state that sanctions are the measures not involving the use of armed force, including a complete or partial interruption of economic relations. The explanatory memorandum to the Australian Autonomous Sanctions Bill 2010 does expressly define sanctions as measures not involving the use of armed force imposed in situations of international concern, including the grave repression of the human rights or democratic freedoms of a population by a government, or the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction or their means of delivery, or internal or international armed conflict. Sanctions impose restrictions on activities that relate to particular countries, goods and services, or persons and entities. Now we will discuss the definition of embargoes. Embargoes are similar to sanctions but are usually more severe and can represent complete prohibition of all trade activities between countries. The word embargo is commonly linked with restrictions on weapons and dual-use goods, and is most often used in the context of arms embargoes. Now we must address the question of who issues sanctions. Sanctions and embargoes are political trade tools put in place by United Nations Security Council, European Union. United States, and Australia. Firstly we will discuss the United Nations imposed sanctions. The Security Council sanctions have taken a number of different forms, in pursuit of a variety of goals. The measures have ranged from comprehensive economic, and trade sanctions, to more targeted measures such as arms embargoes, travel bans, and financial or commodity restrictions. The Security Council has applied sanctions to support peaceful transitions, deter non-constitutional changes, constrain terrorism, protect human rights and promote non-proliferation. To enact a UN sanctions resolution, an affirmative vote, of at least 9 of the 15 members, including countries who have the veto right, China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, should occur. Secondly, European Union. The restrictive measures, sanctions, are an essential tool in the EU's Common Foreign and Security Policy CFSP, through which the EU can intervene where necessary to prevent conflict or respond to emerging or current crises. In spite of their colloquial name sanctions, EU restrictive measures are not punitive. EU sanctions are a foreign policy tool, so it inherently has an effect on non-EU countries. The EU sanctions impose binding obligations, only on EU nationals, or persons located in the EU. Thirdly the United States. The Office of Foreign Assets Control OFAC, of the US Department of the Treasury, administers and enforces economic, and trade sanctions, based on US foreign policy, and national security goals against targeted foreign countries and regimes, terrorists international narcotics traffickers, those engaged in activities related to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and other threats to the national security, foreign policy or economy of the United States. Fourthly Australia. Australia implements United Nations Security Council UNSC, sanctions regimes, and Australian autonomous sanctions regimes. The Australian government, has decided to implement Australian Autonomous Sanctions Regimes as a matter of Australian foreign policy. Australian Autonomous Sanctions Regimes may supplement UNSC sanctions regimes or be separate from them. Learn how to implement sanctions, in a practical way in our Sanction Compliance Specialist Certification Program, and in our Certified Compliance Manager Certification Program. Visit www.gci-ccm.org